for our next topic, we're going to talk about scope and scheme. So if I define A, and let's define it to be 100, then now the name A is defined, and that has global scope. And if I say plus 7A, then this A will be pulled from the global scope. And you can see when I mouse over A, it points me to where that's defined. So we have this scheme form called a let structure. And the let structure has a list of two values. The first is a name, the second is a value. And if I add these together, and I'll mouse over to show you, this A comes from four, this B is three, it comes from above. And when I run this, this actually gets evaluated. And we see that we get seven. Four plus three is seven. Now A is 100 and B is undefined. So both of these come from the local scope. So if I define A to be four and B to be A plus one and say plus AB, what do you think that results in? And you can see now that's 105, which may seem odd to you because we, we clearly define A to be four and B is A plus one. However, here, this A comes from global scope. The scope of these names is only going to be in this scheme form here. So let says apply this local scope to these names. So up here, it's pulling these values from global scope. So I'll make a note here. As you're looking at this code, you'll remember A comes from the outer scope. So let's say, well, I want B to be whatever I define A to be in the let structure plus four. I can nest my let structures. So I can run this now, and you'll see that this gives me the result I expect. A is four, and B is A plus one. But this A comes from this inner scope right here because this entire let structure is within the scope of the outer let. So here, A comes from the inner scope. Actually, I think I'd call these wrong. I think I would call this global scope, and I'll call this outer scope. You need to keep in mind that let enables you to do some pretty confusing things. So for example, let's say let x be 9. So then we're going to let x be 3 and y be 5 times x. Let's add x and y together. Now think about what value you'll get here. So this entire let structure evaluates to 48. Now x is defined in the global scope to be 10. So here we're defining x to be 9, and that's the x that's used to calculate y. But in our form that we're evaluating, that x is defined here with 3. So we're basically ghosting the value x, and that's something you wanted to avoid because that can make things difficult for you, especially in a more complicated scheme program. It can be something that's very difficult to debug. And of course, you can also do something even more confusing. Definitely don't ever do anything like this. But if I want to do something where I want to make a list out of the car of one, two, three, four, and the cutter of one, two, three, four, when I run this, you'll see that the car, I've mapped that name to be the cutter. So the first value in my list is going to be the cutter of that list. And the name cutter, I've mapped to the car function. So when I ask for the cutter, I'm going to get the car. Now, obviously, this isn't something you would want to do in practice. You want to be aware that your code doesn't do th something like this on accident. Again, something that makes it very difficult to debug your program. There's no reason I can't use a let inside of a function. So here I'm going to define a function that takes one parameter and I'm going to define some names. A is going to be times two X, X. B is going to be plus one X and C is going to be five and I'm going to return plus ABC. And I'll call that with a parameter of 10. And you can see it calculates X squared is 100 times 2 is 200. This is 11, this is 5. So 200 plus 11 plus 5 is 216. So here I'm using these variables to simplify what I have to write when I'm doing this, the form that I actually want to evaluate. So we can even do something more complicated than that. So suppose we want to write a function that calculates the volume of material in a cylindrical shell. I'm going to define, and I don't want to call it cylinder volume because that's not what it is. I'll call it cylinder material. 
And to determine what the volume of material it takes to create this shell, I'm going to need three parameters, the height, the radius, and the thickness. So the height and radius are going to give me volumes of a cylinder. And then using the thickness, I can check the outer volume and the inner volume, and the difference will be the amount of material in the cylinder. I'm going to use pi a lot. So suppose I don't have pi defined. I can define it, and that's going to be sufficient precision for me. And I want that to be available in my next let structure. So I'm going to do another inner let structure. And there I'm going to define a function to calculate the volume of a cylinder. And that's going to be a lambda on the radius and the height. And that's going to calculate to the product of the height times pi r squared. So now I want to take the difference of the outer cylinder's volume and the inner cylinder's volume. The outer cylinder's volume is cylinder vol of the radius and the height. And I think I probably should change this as well to match the order there are in the function above. So I'll say height and radius. And that needs to be in parentheses. And I need to subtract to get the height of this inner cylinder. I need to take the height minus two times the thickness and the radius. I only need to subtract one thickness. So now if I call this function, the height is going to be 20. The radius will be seven. And we'll say the thickness is one. I need a dash here. And so there you see, I get the volume of material in that outer shell. The name plus to be 10 minus to be four and the asterisk to be minus. And then I can do times plus minus. So what do you think that's going to do? Well, that's going to subtract 10 and four. So 10 minus four, and that's six. Again, something you should never do, but it's something that's possible in scheme. Now, before we stop talking about let, something to keep in mind, let and lambda structures are essentially equivalent. So if I have let a before b five, and I add those together, it turns out that that's equivalent to lambda a b plus a b four and five. And I need to put a parentheses there so that my lambda is contained. And I'll run that to show you that those do evaluate to the same thing. Both are nine. The difference is with lambda, the parameters come in their own list. Whereas here with a let statement, they're in this column. Those are the formal parameters. The actual parameters to the lambda, that's the second column. And then the actual form that gets evaluated stays the same. And we can go in the other direction as well. Here is a lambda that takes two parameters and it's going to square them and take their sum. And that's equivalent to the let form, let x be three, y four. And I'm going to add x times x and y times y. And just like above, they evaluate to the same thing. Here, this parameter list to the lambda becomes the, the first column of our let names. The actual parameters become the second column. And then the form stays the same. And so you can convert any lambda to a let and any let to a lambda. And there is an exercise that has several examples of these to give you practice going back and forth.